1.11 is the last one on food chains and food webs. The learning objective is to describe food chains and food webs uh, and their constituent members by trophic level. So a food web is just a whole bunch of food chains all put together because it recognizes that, you know, you can be eaten by more than one thing and you can eat more than one thing. So it depicts the total flow of energy and nutrients in that ecosystem. It can get super complicated. A thing that's going to come up a lot in this class is the idea of positive and negative feedback loops. So positive feedback loops are things where A causes B and then the existence of B causes A to happen more. So it's kind of a self-perpetuating cycle where you get more and more and more and more happening. A negative feedback loop is the opposite. A causes B and then B is like a shutdown mechanism for A. So it stops that from happening. When we talk about positive and negative feedback loops, it's not the good and the bad ones. In fact, some negative feedback loops can be a good thing, and some positive feedback loops can be a bad thing. Again, it's just like, do you have a increasing effect? So is it adding, or is it taking away? Negative. So in feed feed webs, in food webs, this is important because if you remove a species or add it to a um, a food web, you can get this whole chain reaction happening. A couple ways that we can get this, or we can see this change, is by looking at the keystone species. So a keystone species is a species in an ecosystem that are just so vital to the function of that ecosystem. But if you take that away, then that causes a drastic change in the ecosystem. So very similar to how if, you know, building an arch, you take away that top piece, that whole arch falls down. And that's what we call a keystone, so that's why it gets that name. So, for example, uh, in this particular food chain, sharks are apex predators, and they feed on cow nose rays. And then they feed on bivalves and arthropods, like so these little guys. So, just by being there to eat them, it keeps their population in check, and therefore their population in check. But if they get taken away for example, because of overfishing, now these rays are able to just produce and produce and produce. There's nothing keeping that food chain in check and because there's more of them, they all need more food. So this population is impacted as well. But that's also going to have uh, the opposite effect because once all that's gone, all that food source is gone, now the cow nose rays are going to be affected and then boom, you've got a whole extinction of a food chain because this guy isn't here. So he's, he's a pretty big deal. Invasive species are species that are not native to that area and cause ecological harm. So they have put themselves into this food chain and they've completely thrown off the balance. So like with these lionfish, they've come into Florida waters and started eating fish that they have no business eating and then that just, just messes everything up. You know, it's, it's awful. That's why you've probably seen a lot in the news. You know, they have like lionfish killing competitions and grilling things. And it sounds terrible. And, you know, even if you don't want to participate in that, it's still an important thing that they're doing to help our aquatic ecosystems. Because these guys, as pretty as they are, they just, they cannot be in, in our area because it's just messing too many things up. Right. As a summary for the last time, describe food chains and food webs and their constituent members by trophic level, adding in how they are affected by changes in that food chain. And then we're done. The first unit. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. But if you have any feedback, please let me know so we can make unit two even better.